Stan Jabalisco here, to talk about something called electrostatic shielding. Perhaps you've heard of this technique. It has a, a lot of applications, and I'm going to show you here just a couple of those applications, some of the earliest iterations of this technique. Uh, imagine that you have an air core transformer consisting of a primary winding and a secondary winding all along a common axis like this wound so that the coils are near each other but not wound directly over each other. <clears throat> you might want to do that to reduce the capacitive coupling between these two coils and you want only the magnetic inductive coupling to cause the transforming effect to take place. This might be the case, for example, in a radio frequency or RF transformer. You might wind these two coils on a, say, a discarded paper towel uh, roller. You know those little cardboard tubes that you get when you're finished with a roll of paper towels. You might wind your coil on that, or you might wind it on a stick of wood, <clears throat> on a wooden dowel, or something like that, or even a plastic form, a plastic PVC pipe. But the important thing here <clears throat> is that you want to minimize the capacitive coupling between these coils so that only the inductive coupling uh, causes the transformation to take place. Your RF in, your RF out. Well, if you wind them in a concentric manner like this rather than one right over the other, that helps. But it isn't going to con completely get rid of the capacitive coupling between these coils. What do I mean by that? Well, just the fact that they're two objects near each other can cause capacitive effects to uh, degrade the performance of a radio frequency transformer. But a long time ago, they thought up a technique to get rid of that problem. Put a screen between these two coils like that. This is a flat screen. It comes right out of the page at you. A wire mesh or a screen and then ground that screen at any point. You can just take any edge of the screen and, and ground it. When you do that, what you're going to do is you're going to block the electrostatic coupling between these two coils because this grounded mesh will in effect prevent the capacitive coupling from taking place. But the inductive coupling, the magnetic field, you know how the magnetic flux around these coils will go. Something like this, something like that, something like that. The magnetic lines of flux will not be obstructed by this screen or wire mesh, only the electric. Uh, therefore, the coils will still inductively couple to each other, but they will not capacitively couple to each other. <clears throat> That's one application of electrostatic shielding to improve the performance of a radio frequency transformer. Well, there's another way to do that, too, and that is with a small directional loop antenna. Now suppose that you have a coaxial cable going to your, say, your receiver, your radio receiver. Shortwave radio receiver. Coaxial cable. And then, maybe on the roof of your house or in the attic or something like that, you construct a small loop antenna. One side of the loop goes to the shield of the coax. The other side goes to the center conductor of your coax. These dashed lines or dotted lines here represent the shield of your coax. So in fact, you, you would connect <coughs> the wire at the feed point right here. You would connect one of these wires to the shield and the other wire to the center conductor like that. Then you have a small loop antenna. Maybe, oh, just a few feet in diameter and only one 
turn of, say, heavy copper tubing. Well, you find that in order to get that directional null that you want out of a loop like this, it's just not, doesn't seem to be working that well. It seems as if you're getting signal even from the direction in which you should have a null. And that direction in this case would be right out of the screen or right out of your screen at you and right back behind your screen away from you. That is the axis of the loop. That is where you would expect to have this null. But for some reason, when you try to null out an interfering signal that way, it just doesn't quite work. Well, there's a way to improve the performance of this loop. The reason that that isn't working is that this loop is behaving not only as a inductive loop, but as a capacitive whip antenna connected to your center conductor. In effect, the whole mass of this copper tubing is acting like a little whip antenna, and that's not what you want. You don't want a small whip antenna. You want a small loop antenna, and you want it to behave like a real honest-to-goodness loop. So what can you do? Well, instead of copper tubing, you can use coax. Say RG8U or equivalent, the big stuff. And you connect the shield, and so this entire loop becomes a ring of coax. Shield it all the way around. And then, at this point right here, you connect the shield of this loop of coax to the shield of the coax going into your radio, which, of course, is grounded. <clears throat> then the center conductor of your coax goes to the center conductor of this uh, coax right here. The center conductor goes around the loop. The center conductor comes back and shorts to the shield right there so that you have, in effect, the same loop that you had before, but now the shield of the coax, which is connected to the ground point right here, goes around. But then the far end of the shield, you leave free. You do not, in fact, connect this back to the other shield so that you have a complete closed loop for your uh, your antenna itself and the shield however is only grounded at this one end so it's an open loop that will cause this braid of this coax or the shield of the coax to act like an electrostatic shield but not as a magnetic field shield. So it will tend to get rid of the tendency for this loop antenna to behave like a small whip and force it to do what you want it to do, and that is to behave like a loop, a pure loop, and nothing but a loop. And then you will find that the null that comes right out of the screen at you and goes right back at the screen away from you should be sharper and more well-defined and you should have better luck getting rid of that interference that you are so desperate to get rid of. And believe me, these days, electromagnetic interference, also known as EMI, is a real bugaboo for amateur radio operators and shortwave listeners. Now, don't get that confused with ELF, extremely low frequency. An um, another term for this is RFI, although that is more of interest to amateur radio operators whose transmitters might disrupt the performance of home electronics equipment, such as stereos, and increasingly these days, other microcomputer controlled devices. So that is, in effect, two, two examples of electrostatic shielding in the olden days. The idea being that it will shield against the electric field, but not 
against a magnetic field. It will let the magnetic field through. Stan Jabalisco signing off. Until next time, so long.